Ladies and gentlemen, Xander Cage is back! Xander Cage is back! Is his return good though? Let's find out. Hey everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Return of Xander Cage. So Return of Xander Cage is the third installment in the Triple X film. This is the second film to star Vin Diesel while the previous one, State of the Union, starred Ice Cube. The film is directed by DJ Caruso and of course you have Vin Diesel, you have Samuel L. Jackson, Tony Collette, Nina Dobrev, a lot of people here. So Triple X, Return of Xander Cage is about when Xander Cage comes back in action, but very secretive. So when he secretly returns for an assignment, he teams up with all of these people. So now he has a big crew, adding in some over-the-top action dumb moments to go along with it. So Triple X Return of Xander Cage is a movie I honestly had no expectations for. I really was not expecting anything out of this film, but I did just watch the first Triple X and I have to be honest, I was actually surprised by how bad but good that film was. Triple X Day of the Union, on the other hand, was terrible. And so with Return of Xander Cage, I was actually hoping that this would go more of the route of the first film where it didn't take itself too seriously and it just knew to have fun. Sometimes it was like the first, nowhere near as over the top, but it was like the first. But I have to say, unfortunately, Triple X Return of Xander Cage is more like Stay of the Union. Now granted, I don't think this is as bad as State of the Union, but this doesn't excuse the fact that this film has the same issue that I had with State of the Union. Like, come on, how hard is it to make a so bad it's good movie? It's not hard. The first Triple X showed that. And Xander Cage, yes, there are some over-the-top moments. They're still nowhere near as over-the-top as, like, the first. There's none of that oh-my-god moment. But I did laugh a little bit at some of the more over-the-top moments, mainly, like, with the last act of the movie where you get most of the action, because, surprisingly, there really isn't that much action. It's kind of the same way with State of the Union, except I'll say, at least with, unlike State of the Union, I didn't watch this film angry. I just kind of watched it with an underwhelmed look while with State of the Union I actually was pretty pissed off watching that one but the problem with this film is that there just wasn't much to it the film as I said takes itself too seriously with this whole storyline with Vin Diesel meeting up with Tony Collette and him having to get a crew and him and his crew going this assignment and I really don't care what's happening. I just want to see something dumb happen. And I have to say the opening scene, like the opening scene of this film, without spoiling anything, that actually set up the tone of what I thought the rest of the film was going to be. Because the film really does shift in tone. We're focusing on Tony Collette, but then we go to Xander Cage, and then for when and then for a while, we all we see Xander Cage do is just being this cool guy, and that's no problem. But the problem is that he's with all of these women, and there's even a scene where he's like with eight women at once, and. It's just not necessary. I can maybe tolerate with him being like with one or two, but him with like eight before he has to go on this assignment was really ridiculous in my opinion. I will say Vin Diesel at least looked like he was still having fun, and I did still have fun seeing Vin Diesel here. Now, yes, granted, he's not exactly the most Oscar kind of actor or anything like that, but Vin Diesel, he's still a lot of fun here. He really is. And I have to say the same does go for Samuel L. Jackson, although way more underused here than State of the Union. I thought State of the Union underused him. Oh no, this movie underused him to the next level. But for the screen time Samuel L. Jackson had, for the small screen time that he had, honestly, he still looked like he was having a lot of fun. I also have to say that even some of Vin Diesel's new teammates I actually really liked. I I really liked Ruby Rose. I actually was surprised with how much fun I had with her character. I had fun with Rory McCann, who I'm not gonna lie, actually made me laugh a few times. I thought his character was actually very interesting. Nina Dobrev, now I'll say this, 
When the movie introduces her, I actually was quite annoyed by her. I don't think she's as annoying as some people make her out to be personally, but when they introduce her, I'm just like, oh, come on now. Because I do like Nina Dobriv. Like, I don't watch Vampire Diaries, and I know she's not in Vampire Diaries anymore, but mainly from Let's Be Cops, I actually remember liking her. And I actually did like her, but more in like the second half. Her character started to really grow on me more. Like, there is a scene in the climax, I'm not gonna lie, it made me laugh. It deals with her having to use a gun for the first time. That probably was the biggest laugh I got out of this film because it was so ridiculous and so over the top. And it was one of the few times, one of the few times, the film actually wasn't so serious and I had fun with it, which is what I appreciate. I just wish that the rest of the film was like that. Donnie Yen was badass here though. He has some of the most awesome action scenes in this film. Maybe, if not the most awesome. Like, there's one scene in the beginning of this film dealing with Donnie Yen, and I'm not gonna lie, I actually went holy shit at that scene because of the choreography, the stunts, all of that was really exciting in my opinion. As for everyone else in the group, which deals with one of them, I believe, is Tony Jaw, and the other one is Chris Wu. Yeah, every time they pop up on screen, I forgot they were actually part of the group because they really were not memorable, in my opinion. I really did not care for their characters. And Tony Collette. Oh my god, Tony Collette. She's a good actress, but what the hell happened here? She was awful. Now, as far as performances, everyone here is either pretty good or fine, but Toni Collette, I don't know what happened, but she was by far the worst performance in this film. The action, for the most part, I did actually really like. It was very well filmed. I was able to see what was going on, to DJ Crew's credit. He did a good job, for the most part, with the action scenes. Sometimes, there are some close-ups, and there's maybe just a little bit, I'm just saying, just very little bit of shakiness, just here and there. But, it was well filmed, for the most part, and I was able to get behind with the action, especially the scene which you saw in the trailer which is Vin Diesel and Donnie Yen riding on a motorcycle through the ocean. Yeah, that was one of the most dumbest things, but I'm not gonna lie, it was very entertaining. I have to say, cinematography-wise, it's actually a very good looking movie. I was actually very impressed with a lot of the shots. Like especially the shot where you see Vin Diesel just skiing all over the streets. I thought there were a lot of very nice shots there. You know, like I said right now with the ocean, that was very good looking. Now before I do wrap up this review, I'm gonna mention a spoiler about Return of Xander Cage. So if you guys do not want to know what this certain spoiler is, just cut to this portion of the review right here because I really do need to get it off of my channel. Chest. So I'm about to mention the spoiler in three, two, one. Ice Cube as Darius Snow actually returns. He comes back for a little cameo appearance towards the end of Xander Cage. And that was so cool. I really like that. And I also love that Vin Diesel and Ice Cube towards the end of this movie, well, at the end of the movie, actually, they actually meet each other for the first time. So to see two triple X dudes actually come together and meet each other for the first time at the end, put a huge smile on my face. But here's where I have to complain. About a week before this movie was gonna come out, they actually managed to spoil this cameo. And I've been doing a good job avoiding this. I avoid it on TV, because I don't really watch that much TV. I've been avoiding it just everywhere else. But of course, damn YouTube. You know, when they have those ads, when the ad would pop up, Guess who would be the first thing to show up on that ad? And I really hated that that cameo was actually spoiled before I saw the movie because if it wasn't spoiled, I have a feeling that that cameo would have been such a refreshing surprise. But no, because they spoiled it, it was no surprise. Overall, you guys, Triple X Return of Xander Cage, I don't think it's terrible by any means. It's better than State of the Union, but it's nowhere as entertaining as Triple X. 
X because Triple X was at least self-aware of the kind of movie it wanted to be while this movie is not self-aware. It's nowhere near as self-aware actually, which is a damn shame. The script is a jumbled mess. It is all over the place. There's no balance between whether it wants to be serious or dumb fun. I'm gonna give Triple X Return of Xander Cage two out of four stars. On a letter grade, it'd be a C minus. Like I said, it's not bad. I don't think it's bad. It's just a bummer of a movie. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Triple X Return of Xander Cage and what's your favorite Favorite installment in the Triple X trilogy since this is now a trilogy. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!